Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to the Spirit-filled Word by David Entry. A time to hear God's Word is a time to be visited. May you receive a visitation as you listen to this message. Be blessed. Well, are you ready for God's Word? Yes. Amen. Last week, we had a miracle service. Do you think we should have another one today? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Sit down, please, please sit down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Ephesians chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians chapter one. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God and blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he has abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Amen. Amen. I spoke about how, Father, what we don't know, teach us. Who we are not, make us. Where we are not, take us to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I spoke about how Ephesians opens up with Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, and he says to the saints, uh, to the, the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. So you see that this is to the saints which are at Ephesus and so it wasn't only written to the Ephesians. It was written to the Ephesians, addressed to the Ephesians, but for the saints. Just like Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. To the church, to the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? This is what the Lord says, then describes the kind of Lord that is talking. He who is. This thing say, he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstand. Then what did he say to the church? I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. It is a basic, a basic Christian mannerism. One of the signs that show that a person is genuinely born again is you begin to develop hatred for sin. Oh, I said something very important. Is that guy born again? Uh, I don't know. Is my boyfriend, but I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. You will know if he's born again or not. Because one of the signs that a person is born again is, is you develop distaste, or not just basic distaste, but hatred for sin. Why? It's not natural, or it doesn't come from you naturally, but it comes from the seed of God that is in you. 
He that is born of God does not sin. Why? Because his seed remains in 1 John chapter 3. Wow. His seed, there's a seed, there's a seed, there's a sperm of God. What makes a person born again is not your opinion that now I go to church. No! Something of God has entered you! Yes. It's not a religious approach. It's a divine, it's, it's a divine impartation. It's a supernatural shifting, supernatural transformation. It's not reformation, it's transformation. Something has changed in you. The Bible says that, it says that because we are sons, <laughs> God has sent for the spirit, Galatians chapter 4, he has sent for the spirit of his son in our hearts, the Christ of our Father. That's five. Because we are sons. Because we are, something has been added to us. Second Peter chapter, chapter 1, verse 3. He says that he has, verse 3 and 4, he has give, by which he has given us all this, he has, uh, his divine power has given us to us all these, uh, all the things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Look at verse 4. Verse 4, he said, by which he has given to us exceeding great and precious promise that through this we might be partakers of what is a nature, divine nature. Think about what you are talking about. You are a partaker of the nature of God. That's what it means to be a Christian. Someone who shares God's nature. Hallelujah! That's what it means to be a Christian. It's not because now I stopped smoking. Now I, I, I stopped drinking Ibo and Shayo. Now I stopped sleeping with girls. Now I have only have two girlfriends. I used to have three. No! I'm not talking about that. The nature of God is in you. You have got the nature of God. Yes, Lord. How do we know? Why do they do paternity tests? Paternity tests will define whose child it is. How? What way? But it's a different child. No, there is a seed. If the seed came from you, we will see the DNA, your DNA. We can trace it in that person. Because that person, if he came from your seed, he will share your nature. In the same way, if you are born again in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, hey! Have you been born again? Let's do some grammar. Those of you who didn't have O level English, uh, listen. <laughs> Sorry, I love everybody. Having been born again, all those born again people, what? is there? Is there? So those are the people who tell you that all those born again people, what? is there? Is there, I said, um, are you a born again Christian? There's nothing like a Christian who is not born oh, again. Yeah. Well, what do you mean by are you a born again Christian? Yeah. Well, how can you, how can you? There can exist a, a Christian who is not born again. Yeah. Having been born again through the word of God. See, I've jumped. That's English now. Having been born again through the word of God. Does that make sense? Yes. It's just the not by, it's just a negative telling you what it isn't, but what it is. So, you have been born again, not of corruptible seed. Okay? But incorruptible. So, it says that there cannot be a human being existing without the responsibility of a seed. Even birds. Have you seen birds mating before? It's very fast. <laughs> it's just like a kiss. Mm, that's it. And a transaction is very fast. So, birds. You, have, you can never see a lioness having a baby. Uh, a baby lion, a cub. Without a male lion Dropping a seed. Yes. Fertilization of an egg only takes place when the seed is introduced into the egg. This is basic science. And it's even the same when it comes to cross-pollination. Yes. Why do you think people have hay fever? Because they are breathing in seeds. Seeds that are supposed to go onto another plant. <laughs> and enter <I> your <laughs> So seeds. By nature, life has been designed to be 
to be a new life is divine, designed to be introduced by virtue of an existing seed. Say seeds. seeds. So for life to continue, seed must be planted. You are believing God for financial breakthrough. Where's your financial seed? Please, 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 please. Seeds. He said, as long as the earth remaineth. Genesis chapter 8, verse 22. Seed time and harvest time shall not cease. It's an order. No science can change it. Even in vitro fertilization, you have to, you need the seed. So a seed is always responsible for a development of uh, an emergence of an, a new life. A seed. So when you become born again, born, there must be a seed responsible for your new life in God. There's a seed. Where did that seed come from? He said, God himself. But that seed doesn't have to fertilize an egg in a womb. That seed, you, that's why Nicodemus asked Jesus, but how can a man be born again? Can you go back into his mind? Jesus said, you don't understand. This one's a spiritual dimension. You don't understand it. You don't understand it. He said, you are a teacher of Israel and you don't understand this? He said, I don't understand this. When the wind is blowing, you can tell it's blowing. You can't tell where it's coming from. You can't tell where it's going. But you know something is happening to me. In the same way, that's how people get born again. You, you, you just don't know exactly when. But you know when the pastor was preaching, something, 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 something was happening to me. Something was happening to me. That's how God releases the seed to the preacher of his word. And some of you don't know that as I'm preaching, God is releasing his seed. Amen. But sit down, please. But the, be- the beauty of what I'm speaking about, the beauty of what I'm speaking about is that when the seed comes, the seed is incorruptible. Yes, Lord. What does it mean, incorruptible? It cannot spoil. It's still potent. It enters your system and nothing can destroy it. It stays in your system. Nothing can destroy it. It's there. It's valid. It's where it cannot be aborted. And he said, you, when you got born again, the seed that was responsible for your being born again is not a corruptible seed, but the... The seed that was responsible for your being born again is incorruptible seed. Through, how did the seed come? Through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Somebody shout hallelujah. Please sit down. Because, so first, first, Peter, first John, sorry, first John chapter three, it says that he was here, he's born of God, sinned not. Because the seed of God abides in him. Hmm. Wow, remains. Did you see that? Who has, whoever has been born of God. So God has been born in people. Mm. So there are some of the people sitting here, many of us here, you have been born twice. That's simple grammar, another way of saying being born again. So it's not just a cliche platitude or just a term or a jargon. It's an experience. Being born again is an experience. It's somebody's reality. It's not a religious position. It's not a religious ideology. It's somebody's actual existential reality. I I, I exist. It's my reality. I'm born again. This is not the David that everybody had always known. This is is a different. That David, he will beat you up if you cross him. That David used to like fighting. I used to bite a lot of people. When I, when I fight you, I, I can't, you know, when I was a boy, when I, we fight and I realize you are beating me, I'll bite you. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll sink my teeth into your skin. my <laughs> boy. Because I have to win. <laughs> When I got born again, my friends in secondary school said, oh, wow, strange, he's changed. 
Because he doesn't react the way he used to. Yeah, that's a different David. So what's responsible for this? It's not my decision to change the way I behave. No, a seed has entered me. Yeah. And, uh, so you are looking at someone. When you see someone who is born again, he has broken up with his boyfriend, her boyfriend. She's broken up with her boyfriend. Or he's broken up with her girl, his girlfriend. And you to be called that. Say, I'm going to church. I'll break up my, my girlfriend. But you go back and you keep eating them again. Hey. Why? Because your own, you are copying somebody's behavior. Wow. But this person's behavior is a nature. Yeah. It's nature. It's nature. He it says that he cannot sin. For why? The seed of God remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. So what differentiates Christianity, actual pure Christianity from other religions is that Christianity is not about you have to do this, you have to do this, but you get to live a way that is different from what you could have done in the past. Mm. Why? The seed of God is in you. He says that you are partakers of the divine nature. So you bear God. If they do paternity tests, spiritual paternity tests, we'll find out that you are a child of God. Amen. Oh, yes. Why do you think in Acts chapter 19, verse 13, a demon could look at someone and say, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But you, you don't have the DNA of God. <laughs> Demons always do paternity tests to know who they can take their st- foolish behavior towards. Okay. Wow. Okay. If you go around trying to cast demons, they will check your paternity tests. And they will say, oh, but this guy, who born him? <laughs> <laughs> who born this girl and she thinks, she, oh, so she saw some Christians saying, I cast out devils. So she's also doing that? Because her father is a bishop. <laughs> that guys, those guys, they were sons of Sceva, a priest. It's in the Bible, exorcists. I'm talking about Acts chapter 19. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul has been preaching. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest. Their father was a bishop. Wow. Sometimes when you go around preaching, someone says, but my father is a bishop, my father is a bishop. And so what? And so what? And so, and so what? And, and so what? Your father is a bishop. Your father is the pope. So what? It is not transferable. Because by virtue of who gave birth to you, who gave birth to you doesn't determine whether you are a Christian or not. When it comes to other religions, you can be that religion by virtue of your family. So if your family is an Islamic family, you are a Muslim. It's not like that in Christianity. It's not like that in Christianity. Christianity, God himself has to born you. You have to be born. No one ever gets born, born again. Simple, common English. Born again. So there must be the first burning, and then the again burning. And the again burning is what causes the again burning is the seed of God. Where is the seed of God? A word of God that gets preached to you, and the word finds its way. You see the way sperms work? That is similar to preaching. So many words are coming. But sometimes it's not all the words that work. It's only one statement that will carry you into your heart. Before you could realize, the seed of God (laughs) entered you. And you feel like, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, Jesus, I need you. I need you, Lord. Why? Because the seed of God's word has entered you. And that becomes responsible for your recent desire for prayer. Your recent desire for the word of God. Your recent desire for church. You get up and you say, oh, I, I want to go to church. What, what has changed? People are surprised. What has changed? It's not a matter of your decision. It plays a role. But mainly, it is something that has entered you. It's the DNA of God. When you, you are in a place of prayer, you feel, wow, I like this. When you are in, in, a place, you are in church, you feel, I like this. Some of you got, you, you were surprised by yourself. 
I think I'm liking this. You came to church and you have and usually when you come with your girlfriend and she doesn't like, she, she has the seed of the devil. When, when you are getting into it, she's wondering, why, 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 why you get up? She doesn't see it or he doesn't see it. But and sometimes you are, you are surprised. After the service, you ask, what do you think? So, I mean, it is not for me. And you are shocked because this is, you feel like, this is me. That's where you can see the one who's, who God's seed has entered and the one who God's seed hasn't entered. When God's seed enters you, it begins to produce godly desires. God, because you can desire God by yourself. If you, don't, you don't have it naturally. How can, you, how can your intestines digest soap? No, you can't. You don't have it inside. No human being can. You, you are not, your intestines have not been designed to digest soap. That's why it doesn't matter how hungry you are, you will eat soap. In the same way, by nature, you can never desire God. Romans chapter 3, verse 11. He said, none seek after God, not one. He said, there is none who understand. There is none who seek after God. There is none. By nature, no human being can. At best, we just do religion. We do religion, but not seek God. So, God is the seeker. Oh, Jesus. The Bible said, for the Son of Man came to seek. Ah. John, in the book of uh, um, Luke chapter 10, verse 9, I think so, or 19, verse 10, says, for the Son of Man, Luke chapter 19, verse 9 and 10, somewhere there, for the, verse 10, the, like 19, 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek, and to, he comes looking for you. You are in church, but actually Christ has come looking for you. Christ has come looking for you. You think you came looking for him. It's not in you. You just followed the friend's advice. Everybody's going, okay, let me also go and let me see what's going on. You just came to check out. You didn't come to seek God. Some churches in America keep saying, uh, seeker sensitive, people who are seeking. No one seeks God. It's God who seeks us. I'm trying to find the truth. You are using your intellectual prowess to just try and look at what suits your thinking. But God, God will not suit your thinking. He only suits your, your desire, your hunger in your heart. He will only put that hunger in you. Jesus puts it this way in John chapter, chapter 6, verse 44. He says that no one, no one, so no, man, no, no one can come to me unless the Father... Please sit down. People are sitting, they, they have to see you on the screen. No one. You cannot take credit for your spiritual development. You can't take credit. No man, no one come to me except Father. The Father himself will be drawing you. Draw, and then your friends will be wondering, are you also going to do this church thing? And sometimes you don't have answers for them. But in your heart, you know that something is pulling you. There's a draw towards God. It's a sign that God has marked you and is doing a wonderful work in your life. And it's a sign that potentially the seed of God has found its way into you. And that means when the seed fertilizes an egg, a new life is, being emerged, is about to emerge. That is why don't let anyone judge you by your past life if you find Jesus. No. Not even the thief on the cross. Don't let anyone judge you by your past. Once you find Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So going back to the text I read, it said we are born again by the uh, incorruptible seed of God. And he says that um, he has given us these promises that will be partakers of the divine nature. That's a very strong statement. Partaker of divine nature. What? You also partake... You are a human being with an aspect of divinity worked wow. into you. Yeah. What? That's a Christian. A Christian is almost like a hybrid. Yes. Wow. <laughs> hybrid of God mingling himself with humanity. Wow. And you are walking. You still have, because of, oh, thank you. Because of your humanity, you will still have the human inclinations. You'll be hungry. You'll be thirsty. You might be angry. You can be offended. 
you can have feelings for your ex. Your feelings for your ex is not a sign that you are not born again. It's a sign that you still have human nature. It's human. It's not, you are not evil for having feelings, for having a crush on somebody. In what way? Did you invite a crush? <laughs> How many of you have had a crush on somebody before? The liars don't leave your hand, but if you're not a liar. <laughs> How many of you have had a crush on somebody before? It happens. In fact, maybe even today. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just like you're walking through Oxford Street and they're selling some things in the shop. You see a shoe that, wow, this is my dream shoe. You see maybe something, a wig. They don't sell wig on there. No, it's in the back. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, what, you see what I'm saying so it's human but you don't have to let that desire begin to now control your life because when you are not born again you are controlled by your desires but when you are born again now the nature of God is in you and you can live by the nature of God so that you don't fulfill the desire Galatians 5.16, you remember that? You can live by the nature of God, which is, which, which is by the Spirit. Mm. You can't tell an unbeliever to walk by the Spirit. How is he going to do that? It's just like you are in the plane, and the pilot comes, he said that, ah, we just found out that um, you haven't paid your fare in the plane, 40,000 feet, so can you come out? <laughs> <laughs> He said, can you get down from the plane? <laughs> can I get down? <laughs> or when, that's why air um, hostess and the crew, they are trained to know how to handle people with health emergencies. So if there's no doctor on the plane, you know there are some planes that landed with dead bodies. It took off, everybody was alive by land because somebody died mid-air. And so if it's four hours journey or six hours journey or eight hours journey, you have to wait till we land because we can't stop mid-air. You can't say, okay, let's stop mid-air and then air ambulance is, <laughs> <laughs> is coming. What I'm trying to say is that it's, it's preposterous to say that. In the same way, it's preposterous to ask, expect an unbeliever to walk by the Spirit. Mm. Wow. Wow. It's, it's, it's absurd and bizarre to expect a sinner to like the Word of God. So don't be surprised, they don't understand why you like God's word. Because one of the clearest characteristics of a sinner is that a sinner has hostility. There's hostility towards the word of God. It dwells in the heart of every sinner. The dimensions may differ, but it dwells fundamentally in the heart of every sinner. Did you hear what I said? Hostility towards the word. Jesus puts it this way. He said, you are not of God, so you don't, re you don't receive the word of God. John chapter 8 verse 47. A hostility towards the word of God inhabits every sinner. Why? Because Jesus said, light has come into the world, but men love darkness. John chapter 3 verse 19. Men love darkness because their deeds are evil, so they don't like the light. So the word of God is beginning to shine light on sinful ways. Does it make sense when people tell you that uh, people, they find out you're a Christian, they just hate you? Because of their sinful life. They say, I'm a Christian. Suddenly, you're a Christian. You, you, are, you are a bigot. I'm a, you haven't said anything. He said, because you're great. You're a bigot. You have a phobia. Yeah. Islamophobia. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't said anything. Just the fact that you said you're... I, 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 I'm sure you heard me tell this story before. This one is a real story. I have a friend. Got a job. At, I think, um, where the bet was it called? <laughs> you guys know all these places. <laughs> <laughs> where, where again? Lad, I think it's Ladbrokes. He was working there. I don't know. It's a, it's a pub or something. And it's, it's a pub, but the bet and, and something like it's a pub. And he told me that they had. A board, notice board in a pub. Anybody at all can write the wildest thing you like. Anything, anything stupid, anything offensive, write it because that is the order of the day. Write anything you like. 
So people will go and write swear words. People will like, right? I want to do this to this person. I want to do this. They write, I mean, it's, 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 I mean that's the how that in, the, in that pub, they, they, that's what they do. They write it. No. He went there. And so he said, okay, since anybody at all can write anything, one day he also decided he went and wrote, all sinners will go to hell. The manager called him within 10 minutes. <laughs> Why did you write that kind of thing there? So I thought you can write it. He said, no, but not this kind of thing over there. Uh, you can write this here. What's wrong? You want to write anything? Yes, you are free to write anything. Yes, so why not? This is not one of the anything. <laughs> Go and re- erase it with immediate effect. If you do that again, you, 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 you are fired from here. People, that's why Jesus said, you want to kill me because I'm telling you the truth. You don't, you don't like the word of God. Don't be deceived to think an unbeliever has a natural interest in God's word. No! They may have interest in the benefits of God's word. They may have interest in the benefits that relationship God brings. But an unbeliever at core never has an interest in the word of God. Never has an interest. That's why when the preacher is going, he's so bored. What's, what's this? Who's this religion? What's this religion? You, do, you just don't like it. Tell me the last time you decided to listen to preaching. Now you are caught because you don't have a choice. And where you are sitting, you can't even get up. So, 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 you are stuck. But preaching? You thought you were coming to a church and uh, those one of those churches, let us pray. Um, because, you came because of that guy. You came because of that girl. Let us pray. But now you feel, wow, what is this? Hey, the pastor is talking about spams. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> so, there's a, there is hostility. Don't forget this. There's hostility towards the word of God resident in every unbeliever. The degrees may vary, but at, fundamentally it's in there. So when you become born again, one of the signs that you are born again, you have developed, you develop a hatred for sin. You develop a desire for God's word. Why? Because of the seed. Say the seed. seed. Say the seed. seed. We are born again by the seed of God. God has got a seed. Yes, where's the seed of God? This. That's the word of God. That's why don't give your attention to a pastor who is preaching, saying wonderful things but it's not preferring and explaining from the text of scripture. It is seedless. It is seedless. And it will not bring the results of God. Amen. In Hebrew, in Luke chapter 8 verse 11, it said, the seed is the word of God. Yes. The seed is the word of God. Let's all say that together. The seed is the word of God. Didn't you realize you are reading Bible? Let's do it properly. Let's go. The seed is the word of God. Say that for the last time. Louder. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So it's not like God has got some, the way men get their seed. No, God doesn't have a seed like that. That's why some of you can feel, oh, oh. Yeah. this thing has hit me. Yeah, wow. it's the seed of God is coming. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Say, let the seed flow. Let the seed flow. See, some people cannot say it. It's just like, all right, let's see. Say, let the seed flow. Let the seed flow. Say, let the seed flow. Let the seed flow. And the seed will flow in Jesus' name. Amen. In Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 1, the scripture I read, it says that God, to those who are, the, the, the faithful in Christ. Blessed be God, verse 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Verse 4. According as he has predestined, just as he has chosen us. I spoke about this extensively last two weeks. He has chosen us before him and before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless uh, uh, without blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated destined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ. 
What is predestined? Or oh, predestination? Predestination. What's the destination of the bars, elephant, and castle? What's the destination of the bars, Paddington, or the train, Paddington? Now, so when they say predestination, the destination has been determined before the bus took off. So when they say God has predestined us, no wonder he chose us, verse 4, from the foundation of the earth. So before you were born, you were chosen. It connotes how he has predestined you, not into church, but he has predestined, verse, predestined us to adoption as sons. Don't mind those who say sons and daughters. No. Sons. Sons. Say sons. sons. This word sons is generic. It's not gender sensitive. It is just like when you say kingdom. You don't say queendom or kingdom. No, it is only kingdom. Even though our former monarch was a female, Queen Elizabeth, we didn't have United Queendom. We had United Kingdom. Kingdom. So Kingdom is generic. It's not, it's not got to do with gender. There are quite a few words like that that are not gender sensitive. In the same way, when they use the word son, generally sons connect men. But this one, the Greek word sons here is not talking about male. It's talking about certain type of human beings. So he has adopted uh, uh, pre uh, unto adoption as sons. Now watch this. You have to understand this. When he says being predestined, uh, a, a being predestined to adoption as sons, why sons? Because it take, why didn't he say the prodigal daughter? For God so loved the world. Son. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed into the image of what? His son. So then for you to be in his image, you are a son. Whether male or female. So it says that there is now no male nor female. Colossians 3, 11. There is no Greek or Jew. No Greek or Jew. Circumcision, circumcision, barbarian, citizen, slave, uh, uh, free in Christ. Uh, uh, let's, go, rather, let's go to the Galatians chapter um, 3, verse 28 or 29. So there's no male nor. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor. There's neither male nor female. Uh, there are no demarcations. When it comes to sonship, we are all sons. All right? Do you understand that? It is people who have become so woke, who have become so deluded and troubled that when they hear sons, they say, no, no. To the extent that they say we actually, we even have to address God as God the mother. Yes. It's madness to the next degree. So the pastor is preaching, he said, God made us sons of, sons of God. Suddenly, you stop listening to the preaching, and you're saying, why, why, why should he say sons? Why? You actually have a problem for, for, for being upset the pastor is not wearing a bra. You have a problem. This has not got to do with what we are dealing with. It's, no, it's completely unrelated. Why should that be your cause? That tells you Satan has hijacked your thinking faculties. Right. Yes. Wow. When yes. Satan takes over people, these are the things they focus on. Yes. They focus on things. Why are you calling the pastor Papa? Oh, oh hey. Satan. Hey. Satan has actually hijacked your faculties. Yes. And usually when people are talking, they talk about you with such confidence. Yes. But when you have insight, you know this person is not well. Yes. And sometimes there's no need to spend your breath answering a mad person. Yes. No need to explain your breath. It's like revelation. And so all you are thinking about is what he said. Oh, 
Oh, well, I don't understand. How can a pastor talk about sperm? But don't men have sperm? Don't we have ejaculation? <laughs> Say you didn't do biologists and we can teach you. <laughs> so your problem is, is, is not the preaching. It's your lack of biological yeah. uh, 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 training. Yeah. And suddenly, you're upset. How can you talk about biology? <laughs> biology. But if I've, if I've spoken about sinuses, if I've spoken about your tympan tympanic membrane, <laughs> I'm talking about the gastric juice. <laughs> How about that? This is just biological terms. Do you know what gastric juice is? Oh, you don't know? Hey. It's in your stomach. Yeah, it's in your stomach. You're right. Gastric juice. Another word for gastric juice is saliva. <laughs> You need the enzymes to help, help, help the food. Oh, come on, you're preaching with me. You're preaching with me. For the food to break down, you need some enzymes. Break it down. And your liver will be producing some enzymes. And there's what we call hormones. These are all just basic biology. Basic. Wow. And so, if I say God has got sperm, it's not your type of sperm. That's why it took so much time to explain his sperm is his word. Oh, Pastor, but he's not sperm. It's just because you are not that enlightened. That's why. But if we take you a little further, the Greek word translated seed is sperma. It's the same Greek word translated sperm. It's the same, but so that people's mind don't go too much on sex because human beings like sex. You know what I mean? Human beings like sex. So people's mind don't quickly go on sex. They just use the seed, but it's actually the sperm. When you do biology, men, when they release the sperm, is the seed. And the women have egg. Do you think you can boil the egg and eat? No, it's not the same as the egg you have been boiled. <laughs> What are we eat? We don't have anything. But mom, can you bring your eggs? Let's boil it. Hey. No, that's different. But it's still called egg. You understand that? Yes, that's different. But it's still called egg. You can't see it. You can't see it unless in a biology class. But you can't see. You see the sister walking there. So you need an egg. Then she will produce an egg for you to because you are so hungry. Then you go and do fried rice with the egg omelette. Omelette. <laughs> With your mother's eggs. No. In the same way, God has got the seed, the sperma, but it's not the same sperma you are talking about. But they operate in the same way. The, the operations are similar. And people get fixated on useless things. They minor on the majors and major on the minors. Please sit down. Let me try and run up. Is someone receiving something? Someone sucking in the word. Sit down, sit down, sit down. What do you say? Let the sea flow. I can't hear you. So, he has predestined us. You understand what that means? He has predestined us because to those he foreknew, he predestined, predestined to be, the purpose of predestination is so that we will be conformed. So before Christ was coming on earth, you were on God's mind already because he has predestined that when Christ comes now, in future, he's going to call you and then clone you into Christ. Yeah. So that when, he, before Christ died on the cross, I said it the other time, he was the only begotten son. Yes, sir. For God so loved the world that he gave the only begotten. But after he died on the cross, he's no more the only begotten. He's the firstborn. Oh, oh. 
Romans 11, Romans 8 is there, is there. Romans 8, verse 29. He says that for those for whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed into the image of why? Why? <laughs> that he might oh, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. That's why he predestined us. That Christ is not firstborn, he's not the only begotten of his father. He's not the only son of God. We are also the sons of God. We are the sons of God. How did we become the sons of God? Give birth to, let me use the, my, my crew English. God born us. God born us again. He said that you have been born by your mother, but that's not good enough. I'm going to make sure I'm going to born you again myself. And then suddenly he sent the word, the seed, into your heart. And when the seed entered your heart, you got born again. Born again. Born again. Born again. And, that, and now you share the nature of God. Wow. Share the nature of God. You have the divine nature. Say, I have the, I've got the divine nature. Say, I've got the divine nature. Please, please, please sit down. I have to start running up. Hallelujah. So Ephesians says that he, verse 5, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5, according as, having predestinated predestined us to adoption as sons, how did he do that? By Jesus Christ. That's why those of us who are born again, Jesus is everything. Jesus is everything to us. He adopted us by Jesus Christ to God himself according to the good pleasure of his will. When he did it, can you imagine? How many of you have done something before? You did something so good and when you finished, you were so happy. Yes, I just like this, that we have been able to clean my room. <laughs> oh yes. Sometimes when you have a lot of laundry that hasn't been done, and everything is lying everywhere in your room, and you are kind of, some of us are quite sensitive to debt. Some of us are quite sensitive to debt. And you go to your room, you are not happy. Yeah, look at the way your bed sheet is dirty. And things are, oh, am I talking to somebody at all? That's those who have bed sheets. I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you go into your room and sometimes you are not happy with the way things are and then one day you took your time you took a whole day you sorted out the laundry you dried them ironed it cleaned the room and then you finish you sit down you feel like yes this is my room In particular, I, one of the, my hobby, just that I don't have time. No wonder I sprain my back. I like, I like DIY. Oh, I have tools. And I just love buying tools. Don't buy some for me, please. Because the one you might buy is not the one I use. I, might, I, I like buying tools. I have fresh tools I've never used. I'm talking about machines for cutting trees, for cutting wood, for cutting metal, uh, uh, gun for nailing, nailing. Oh, I have a different, even workers, many workers, when they come, they say, wow, you have one. It's just, I like DIY. Oh. And sometimes when DIY takes my time, and I take my time, and I, when, I, when I do something, I arrange, I maybe mean, I install in a curtain, and then put the rails there, and put the curtain on, and finish, and everything, make sure the lines are finished, and I, I look at it. You know what? I will go, and then later I'll come. Yeah. <laughs> then I go. When I'm passing 10 times, I'll keep looking at it. Sometimes I'll go and go and touch it again. You know what I'm talking about? Why? Because this is according to the pleasure of my good will. You don't, you didn't, look on the screen, look at, put it back on the screen. You didn't realize that God predestinated you to be adopted to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Yeah. Do you know what that means? Ah, when he sees you sitting in church, go and see the smile on God's face. Oh, look at this, my bad boy. Now he's... Oh. Look at this, my bad boy. Now he's... Oh. 
look at this girl who has slept with so many boys. And then the guys who know you previously are thinking, oh, oh he says in church. But God is so happy. They are using, because of your history, they know they want to use it against you. But God does not care. You could have murdered someone. He doesn't care. Police will take care of that one. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, please, don't. I didn't say if you murder, God doesn't care. What I mean is it doesn't matter your history. If Osama Bin Laden comes to Jesus wow. or any of these Muslim terrorists, mm. they come to church and say, I want to serve Jesus. God will say, oh, look at my God. He, he does this. He saved us and adopted us as sons according to the good pleasure of his will. It's like Pastor David who has finished DIY and he's just looking at it and just smiling. Some of you don't know how much God is smiling on you because you are in church now. God is smiling on you. So leverage on it. Take advantage of it and pray. Take advantage of it and join the ushers. Join the choir. Join, the, join, the, join something. Take advantage of it. Because now you are in God's good books. He's just, say, he's just smiling on you. He's just smiling on you. What have you done? No, you haven't done anything. Just that you are in Christ. Just that you are in Christ and you are enjoying God's word. He's just smiling on you. In spite of Satan is very upset. Satan is saying, but God, look at what he did last night. Look at the amount of porn he has been watching. Look at God does not care what you did. He's more interested in who, what you are doing now. How you are approaching him now. How you are embracing his word now. When you embrace his word, he can never... Look at the text again. Look at it again. Having predestinated, predestined us to adoption as sons by Christ Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Look at this. Look at the next verse. Look at it. Quickly, quickly. To the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he has made us... <laughs> when we are talking about the people God loves, you are also... Like, and it drives Satan mad. Satan is so upset. How can God say, this is one of the people I love? But God loves all of us. Oh, yeah. He loves some of us more. Because we have been accepted in the beloved. Not everybody is in the beloved. No, no. He has accepted, we have been, he has made us accepted in the beloved. The people he loves, his, his, those he has set his love on, he said, okay, no, join. Uh, you, yeah, join. You, join. You, join. And what I find very encouraging and so beautiful is that when he adds you, when you think you are not qualified, not you think, you know. When you know you are not qualified and you are coming in, is it me? He said, yeah, you. No, no, it's a mistake. It's not me. And then you come in and you are not sure. Maybe the security will come and throw you out because you are not supposed to be here. And then, but God is so happy you are finally in. It's not just that he has favored you by calling you. He's actually happy he's called you and you have come. That's why God answers the prayers of the saints. Because we are the object of his love. He has set, Bible says in um, John chapter 13 verse 1 Jesus Christ he lo having loved his own he loves them as telus. that's the Greek word he loves them to the end <laughs> he loved having uh, uh, it says that having loved his own whom were in the world he loved them to the end he loved them. so it's not because you did something and you fell into temptation and stopped loving you it's when you run away that becomes a different problem. But as long as you are still in Christ, in spite of what you got wrong, he still loves you to the end. Tell someone Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. The, I know. For the... No, no, the rapping bit. bit. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. All of you have forgotten your rapping skills. Thank God. It's because you shaved your hair. But... <laughs>
But Jesus loves you. I know sometimes some of you, you feel very unqualified because of your history. But God said in Hebrews chapter um, 8, verse 10, and 10, verse 16, he said, I will put my law in their heart and, their, and I'll be their God. Verse, look at verse 9. I think it's the verse 9 I'm looking for. Verse 9. Um, I'll make my covenant. I think okay, it's verse 11 there. Or oh, chapter 10, verse 16. In fact, the point I'm he said, there are sins and there are lawless deeds. I will remember that. The verse 12 said, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Did you hear what I said? God said, I'll be merciful to their unrighteousness. That's what the devil doesn't understand. I did something small and have you kick me out. But look at this guy. Look at this guy. He said, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Watch this. And their sins and their lawless deeds. Me, God, I will remember no more. You think he was joking? No, he means what he said. If you are in Christ and you have his nature, the things you did in the past, God has forgotten. He has selective amnesia. Wow. He has actually forgotten wow. the things you did. Ah, are you saying God has forgotten? That's what he said. He said, I'll remember no more. So he has chosen not to use it when he's dealing with you. Your enemies will use it, but God will not use it. So the enemy, Bible calls Satan the accuser of the brethren. Revelation chapter 12, accuser of the brethren. From verse 9, his, the Bible says that he accused the brethren day and night before God. That's his job. So sometimes, sometimes you come to church, you feel very unworthy. You feel so dirty. You feel like, no, no, you don't qualify. You are a hypocrite. Satan is accusing you. Sometimes when God wants to help you, he said, come forward and let, let me bless you. You don't want to go because Satan said, don't bother because it won't work. As for you, others can go, but you are, you are fake. Satan will find a way to keep constantly accusing you and not only to you to yourself but it's accusing you before God that God this one is not worthy but God said they are lawless this I will remember no more and Satan said no that's not fair and then so Paul said oh so who can bring a charge against us if someone could stand before God and his voice will mean anything it should be Christ if anybody's voice can mean anything against anyone before God, it should be Christ. He said, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who is justifying. Now look at verse 34. Who is he that called, who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, if, I, if I, instead of him condemning us, he's rather interceding on our behalf. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the extent to which God can demonstrate his love. I've said so much. I don't want you to forget. Religion is, can be very dangerous, particularly. All the problems in the world is through false religion. Yeah. False religion is behind all. Look at what's happening now. It's false religion. False religion. Why is it that someone who is living his life, you are not Palestinian? You are living in UK, but you want to bomb UK, UK citizens. You are not Palestinian, but you can tell a religious person. What kind of religion is it that makes people blood thirsty? Wow. Wow. And they, they are happy when blood is shed. <laughs> and look at everywhere. Before they cut off your head, they will scream religious jargons. They will never say hallelujah. <laughs> Go to a restaurant and take a knife. If you want to, I'm, just, I'm not saying doing. <laughs> oh. Take a night and stand and say, Hallelujah! People will just look at you and laugh at you. But the other one, take a knife and scream the other. Everybody will <laughs> Take cover! <laughs> they are here! <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes when you go on the train and you see some people join, you feel like, I think I need to get out of this. Is <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and then they are blaming BBC. They are blaming Sky News. For reporting about people, we can tell where the problem is coming from. We can tell. How many 
people you see in suit who are who will be going on a train and blasting the train they normally are, we can tell from their beard we can tell from what is on there we can tell from their magazine and their short trousers without uh, uh, with their trainers <laughs> And sometimes, and some, this is what politicians are afraid to talk about. Sometimes we can tell even from their names. Mm. Oh, that's right. Wow. That's a good when you come to Christianity, you don't have to change your name. But other religions, you have to. Wow. I've just dropped something for you to think about. But God loves you. Amen. Yeah, it was you who used to rap. Jesus loved me. Yes. You forgot. I know you forget. <laughs> yes. Jesus loves you. And the beautiful thing is, it is his good pleasure for you to be called his son. Wow. You? Yes. You should have been condemned. I said, no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Oh, what? Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Never forget about that. It doesn't matter what has been going on in your life. There's one thing you should be sure about. The songwriter said, In life, in death, I'm confident and covered by, the, uh, by your great love. I, I'm sure about this, that your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out. In death, life, in death, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My death, my death is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails. Your love never fails. Never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love, your love never fails. Never gives up. Never runs out on me. Your love, your love never fails. Never gives up. Never runs out. And it goes like this. Oh, on and on and on and on he goes. It overwhelms, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. On and on and on, on and on and on and on. Sit up. He goes. It overwhelms, it overwhelms and satisfy my soul. This is the love of God. On and on and on. On and on and on and on. It goes. It overwhelms and satisfies. It overwhelms and satisfies my soul. Come on, confess it. It goes on and on and on. On and on. Never runs out on me. Your love, your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. In life, in life, I'm confident and covered by the of your grace. My death is paid. Never 
Give Jesus praise. Sometimes when you see how much he loved you, when you come into reality and experiential understanding of the love of God, there's nothing you can do but to return the love. Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 4, 16, that he, 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 he first loved us, verse, verse 19 rather. We love him, why? Because he first loved us. That's why we love him. His love initiated our love. And that's why when we come to church, we don't struggle to lift our hands and say, I love you forever. I love you forever. and tell him how much you love him. Tell him how much you love him. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I will serve you with all my life. I will serve you with all my heart. I will serve you to the very end. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. The best thing that can happen to you is being exposed to the Word of God. To hear more from David Entry, Follow him on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, LinkedIn, and subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. You can also find more information about Caris Church and our upcoming services by visiting caris.org. Be blessed.